gentlelady from Pennsylvania is recognized. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Dettelbach, thank you for being here. I want to thank you and I believe about 5,000 uh, of your members, uh, full-time employees at ATF. Just to put that number into some perspective, uh, there are more than 6,500 sworn police officers serving just the city of Philadelphia, my home city. Would it be fair to call ATF a relatively small but mighty law enforcement agency, Director? The people, those 5,000 plus people who work at ATF are incredible people. They are, doing, they, are, they are doing a mammoth job with very few resources. It's a dangerous job. Every single day, it's a dangerous job for them out there because of the types of cases that we often see. Uh, and they're, they're doing a great job at it. I agree with you. As you note in your testimony, ATF is in fact the only federal law enforcement agency with the sole focus of working with police and partners in state and local law enforcement to protect Americans from violent crime. Correct? We are the federal agency with the sole focus on violent crime. I want to say to those of you in the room or who are watching on TV, if you're experiencing whiplash, I'm sure it is not lost on anyone in this room, anyone who cares about the issues around police and law enforcement. We are just one week from removed from National Police Week. I sat over on the Regal Senate side as we honored the fallen police officers. It's whiplash in this hearing. One week we honor fallen police officers, the next we wanna defund law enforcement like you. From rooting out cartels, fueling the fentanyl crisis, to curbing gun violence, the number one killer of American children, gun violence. That's what people on the other side of the aisle ought to be outraged about. The number one killer of our children in this country gun violence, and progress has been made, even though uh, our Republican colleagues attempt to discredit and disfund, defund you. I want to turn to the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. I'm so proud that we were finally able to do something, some small things around gun violence. Uh, we are weeks away from the second anniversary of this, this great act, uh, June 25th. I was heartened to see that last month, ATF finalized a rule implementing the landmark legislation. Part of the rule overlaps with my bill, the Fire Sale Loophole Closing Act, which would prevent FFLs who have had their licenses revoked or denied from selling old business inventory guns without background checks. Some Republican lawmakers have raised concern that the final rule goes too far. Could you tell us, why is this rule necessary? Why do we need to know what happens to those inventoried guns? Um, so uh, again, of course, as you know, the rule is under litigation. So I'm limited to the public record and what I can say. The text of the rule speaks for itself and should be looked at and also the explanation, uh, the hundreds of pages of explanation and the response to comments. Uh, uh, with respect to that one part of the law uh, that Congress passed and is part of the Gun Control Act, uh, if a dealer uh, who is a licensed firearms dealer loses their license, right, uh, the notion that that somehow for the person who loses their license can then not follow the Gun Control Act, right, is inconsistent with the structure of the Gun Control Act in many cases. It's so, so that's So the idea is that everybody's playing by the same set of rules. There are so many dealers and collectors who are following the law out there. And part of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act and part of our enforcement is to make sure that those who obey the law aren't being treated at a competitive disadvantage to people who are out there ignoring the law, right? It's only fair. There are so many people uh, who are obeying the Gun Control Act, who are obeying the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, and those who are out there ignoring it, uh, just from a plain old business perspective, we have to have a fair marketplace where everybody obeys Congress's statutes. I couldn't agree more. It's also common sense that if you've lost your license, you can't just get rid of your inventory without following the law. Including background checks. Exactly. What challenges have you had, has ATF had, in, uh, faced in implementing the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act? Litigation is clearly part of it, but what else? Well, I think when Congress uh, gave us our new tools, which we're very grateful for, uh, Congress didn't appropriate 
extra monies for us to enforce those particular new tools. Uh, we did get a uh, million dollars a year to work with the National Shooting Sports Foundation on the Don't Lie for the Other Guy campaign, which is an important collaborative effort we have with the industry. Uh, but the 500 cases, defendants that we charged uh, under the new statutes with our prosecutors and our partners, right, that's taking away from other priorities that we also still want to service. So Resources. again, when we at ATF are choosing what to do, Congresswoman, we're choosing between very important things. We're choosing between body-worn cameras and cartels. We're choosing between gangs and, 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 and carjackings. Those are very important things that we are trying to balance. I, I couldn't agree more. I honor all of your agents. Uh, I have a unanimous request, um, consent request, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, number one, uh, you spoke about fallen ATF officers. Uh, and what I would like to enter into the record is a listing, multiple page listing, of fallen ATF officers, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosive fallen agents Not objection. over the years. I also have a unanimous consent uh, request to enter this article from March of this year, ABC News, U.S. stats show violent crime dramatically falling. Not objection. And I'd like to also enter into the record an article around a child in Philadelphia just last month, three-year-old child, uh, sadly picked up a firearm and died from a, a shot. Without objection. Thank Gen you. Gentlelady yields back, gentlemen.